Hi guys, so today we're checking out the DV8 Off-Road Center Mount Winch Capable Front Bumper fitting all 2016 and newer Toyota Tacomas. So if you're looking to add more capability to the front end of your truck, you're looking for protection, recovery, and even some lighting options, then this is going to be a great choice to take a look into. Now what I will say right off the bat is that this is going to be great for the truck owner who is not looking to do any major modification to the front end of their truck while also adding a front bumper in the meantime. Now this is going to be a completely bolt on install and you're not going to need to drill or make any modifications to your current setup in order to bolt this on which i think is a big win out of this front bumper now this is going to offer a lot including light mounting options you will be able to mount up a 20 inch light bar up top you're going to have some recovery points on the front if you ever get into a sticky situation while you're on the trail or even while you're on the street and this is also going to come with a heavy duty winch plate capable of holding a winch with a pulling capacity up to 12 12,500 pounds. Now what I do really like about the placement of the winch is the fact that it's going to be bolted to the frame which is going to add a solid pull point for that winch and it's going to be sitting a little bit lower inside the bumper down here so it's not going to get in the way of any of your cooling components making sure that your truck is running as efficient as possible. Now this is also going to do a good job at protection. Obviously it's not going to be a full bumper it's just going to offer this protection in the middle here but sometimes that's all you need. Um, this is going to be made of a steel plate construction so it will be incredibly durable. Perfect if you're looking to take your truck out on the trail or you're just looking to protect from any kick up on the street and it's going to have a nice texture black powder coat finish on top which will do a really good job of protecting that steel underneath and also just creating an off-road look for the front end of your Tacoma. Now with all of that being said this is going to be pretty affordable for a front bumper in my opinion coming in at roughly $550. Now like I had mentioned before or when taking a look at some other options, a lot of front bumpers are usually going to require modification. So you may have to cut your current setup or your current front bumper on the uh, front end of your truck and you may have to trim a couple of things. Now with this, you don't have to do any cutting at all. This is a completely bolt on install. And again, I think that really shines through out of the construction while also offering a lot of the features that you would see on a full width front bumper. Now taking a look at some other choices that are going to be a little bit less expensive and kind of similar to this, they're usually going to be for brush guards or bull bar setups. Now with this, you're getting a lot more than you would with a bull bar, but you don't have to do everything that you have to do with a full width front bumper, like those cutting and modifications that you would have to do. So overall, I think if you're looking to get a very easy setup and you're also looking for all of the capabilities that a front bumper can offer, then this option by DV8 is a great choice. Now, as far as install is concerned, like I said again, this is gonna be completely bolt on. I'm gonna give it a two out of three wrenches though because the install is pretty lengthy, but it's nothing you can't do in your driveway with some pretty basic hand tools in about two hours. So speaking of that install, let's jump into that now. The tools that I used for my install were an electric ratchet, a trim removal tool, a flathead screwdriver, a dead blow, a 3 8 inch drive ratchet, a 19, 12, and 10 millimeter wrench, a 3 inch extension, a 19, 14, 12, and 10 millimeter socket, a soft pry tool, and an impact wrench. So the first step to our install is to take off our grill. You're going to need a 10 millimeter socket for this, and you're also going to need a trim removal tool. So we're going to take out the bolts first. There are two up at the top. I'm going to use that 10 millimeter socket to remove those. And then we can remove the clips on either side. So over on this side, on either side of the grill, we're going to just have a pop clip. What I'm going to do is just take the trim removal tool and pop that out of place. And we can do the same thing for the other side. So at this point, now that the hardware is out of our grill, we can just go ahead and remove it by pulling forward. And then what we can do next is start to disassemble our bumper. Our next step is to take off our lower splash shield. Now on either side, there's going to be two bolts behind the splash shield. Um, I'm going to be removing those with a 10 millimeter socket and then the remaining bolts are going to be on the front side of the splash shield. This may be a little bit difficult to see. However, I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket and a small extension just to give myself some room to work with. So 
So before you remove the front bolts, I would just repeat that process with the bolts that are behind the splash shield on the other side. And then we can take that 10, same 10 millimeter socket and remove the bolts on the front. So once all the bolts are removed, we can remove the lower splash shield. So our next step is to remove the first two bolts on the inside of our wheel well here. We're missing one down at the bottom here, as you can see, but we still need to remove this one up at the top. This is gonna allow us to pull our fender back so we can unclip our bumper on either side. So I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and remove this bolt up at the top. You should also use a 10 millimeter socket for this one down at the bottom. Once that's removed, what we can do is start to peel the fender away from the bumper. It's gonna be held in by clips as well as adhesive. Now, if you are taking this off for the first time, uh, it may be a little bit more difficult just to pull the fender away with the adhesive being there, but you can take a soft pry tool and you can just pry away from the bumper If you need to, what you can do is just use that pry tool to unclip the bumper. As you can see, it's disconnected there. So then we can repeat that on the other side and then we can unclip the middle part of our bumper. So now that we disconnected our fender, there's a little bit of hardware underneath that's connecting our front bumper cover to the crash bar as well as to our wheel well. Now there's a pop clip in the corner that we're gonna disconnect using a trim removal tool. Next we can remove that bolt that's holding the bumper cover to our crash bar with that same 10 millimeter socket that we used before. Then we can repeat that on the other side and then unclip our bumper at the front. So before we remove the clips that are holding on the front of our bumper, we do need to disconnect this wiring harness here. We just have to press down on that tab and pull back. Just wanna make sure that we're protecting all of our wiring harnesses uh, before we pull the bumper away from the truck itself. Then we can grab a trim removal tool and start removing our clips. So next I'm gonna take that trim removal tool, just like the one that we used on our grill. And we're just gonna take off these clips that are holding on the front of our bumper cover. So now that all of our clips are fully removed at the front, what we can do is remove our front bumper cover. So our next step is to take off our crash bar here. We're gonna have three studs and we're gonna take that hardware off with a 14 millimeter socket. I'm also using my electric ratchet. Then we can take off the three on the other side and then pull off our crash bar.
So we can remove our crash bar. Now mine's giving me a little bit of an issue um, just because it's been on for a long time. I'm gonna take a dead low and just tap it off. So our next step is to disconnect the brackets for this cooler here. We need to push it back towards our AC condenser. This is going to allow a little bit more room for our winch plate when we mount this up. Um, so what I'm going to do is grab a 12 millimeter socket and I'm using a three inch extension and we're going to remove the two bolts that are holding this in place. So in order to move our cooler back, there is a bolt right on the passenger side frame rail. Now I'm inside the wheel well right now. I turned the wheel out to give you guys a better look. Now there is a dust cover right here that's held in by a couple of clips. I'm gonna take a trim removal tool and just pop that out of place. And just flip this up. And then we'll be able to access that bolt there. So I'm going to use a 12 millimeter socket to remove that. Once that's removed, we'll be able to move this line back so we can add our um, relocation brackets. So our next step is to add our relocation bracket here. This is just gonna push our cooler a little bit farther in towards the AC condenser to make room in the front here. Now I'm gonna use the provided hardware to mount this up. So you wanna make sure that this is gonna line up with the top there. We can add our hardware here. And I'm just gonna tighten that up while we're here, since we may not have access when we get, push it into the truck over there. I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter wrench and just tighten that up. And then we can do the same thing on the other side, and then we can go ahead and mount these up with the factory hardware in the factory location. So once those are on there, what we can do is start to push this back a little bit. Line it up with our factory mounts. And we can take our factory hardware and thread that in. I'm gonna use a 12 millimeter socket to tighten that up. So I'm gonna use a 12 millimeter wrench just because I don't have a lot of space because of this upper bracket here. So at this point we can mount our winch plate up and these are gonna go on our factory studs. You just have to line them up, and this will fit on there just like that. 
So now that our winch plate is on our studs here, we can take our provided brackets. These are really only gonna go on one way. They should be facing inward. And then we can take our factory hardware and thread that into place. So since these studs are through our winch plate on the other side, what I'm gonna do is tighten these up. I'm using the same 14 millimeter socket that we used before. And I'm also using a small extension just to give myself a little bit of room. And we can do the same thing on the other side. So at this point, if you do have a winch that you're looking to mount up, you would mount it up at this time since there is a lot of room to work with and we are going to be putting the bumper cover back on in just a second. So this is gonna give you a little bit more room to mount up that winch and get everything right beforehand. Now I would also recommend that you test fit the new front bumper. Because these brackets do have a little bit of adjustability with them, I would recommend that you just make sure that it lines up beforehand. Now the last thing that we're gonna do before we mount up our factory bumper cover again is just take out this center section. This is gonna allow the brackets on our new front bumper to go through the bumper cover from the factory and mount up to our brackets on the frame here. Now I'm gonna be using a trim removal tool or a soft pry tool in order to unclip all of these. Um, so what we are just going to unclip all of the surrounding clips and pull that forward. You'll see that in just a second. So on either side in the middle here, we're gonna have two clips. Uh, these are a little bit different than the surrounding clips. So I'm gonna take that soft pry tool push down on that tab and just pull back on the clip. You might also want to use a flathead screwdriver for this. Now once those are out, we can start to pry out the remaining clips. Now with this, all you have to do is just get that tab past the bumper there and push forward. Once you have the bottom ones out, then we can work on the ones up at the top. Once they're all out, we can remove this center section and then we can reinstall our front bumper cover. So what we can do at this point is grab our front bumper cover and put it back into place and line up these front clips. I'm gonna make sure that the fenders are on the outside. We're gonna have to Wiggle this in place. We're gonna just kind of have to mess with either side to get it around those clips there, just so we can fit it a little bit better. And then we can secure it at the front with the clips that we originally removed. So we can just take these clips and just pop these back into place. This is gonna hold on the front of the bumper while we secure everything else. While we're at the front, we can re-secure this wiring harness. 
So now that the bumper is kind of in place, what we can do is just make sure that this is clipped in over on this side. We could also clip in our fender. Now, if you have torn up the adhesive, what I would recommend to do is grab some 3M tape just to keep this flush with the quarter panel in the front of the bumper here. What I'm gonna do is just pop that back through, secure that into place. Then we can grab our 10 millimeter bolt that's gonna hold our fender, our bumper, and our quarter panel together. We can thread that in and tighten that up with a 10 millimeter socket. Then we can take the clip that we originally removed from the um, bottom of the bumper that's holding it to this wheel well inner liner here. We can secure that back down. And then we can repeat this on the other side. So at this point, we can mount up our front bumper. Now, obviously, these two tabs here are gonna line up with the brackets that we installed earlier. And this whole bumper is gonna go around this shroud here. So I have it on my lap right now. It might be helpful to grab an extra hand. I'm just gonna scoot this in and line it up with our brackets. Want to make sure that it's as flush as possible with our front bumper. And then once it's lined up, we can grab our provided hardware, which is the large bolts, flat washers and lock washers, and we can secure that through the bracket. So once you have the hardware on both sides secured down and you also have the bumper aligned where you want it, what we can do is tighten these bolts down so we can keep the bumper in place. I'm gonna use a 19 millimeter socket and a wrench to do this. What we can do at this point is reinstall our lower splash shield. So I'm gonna use the same hardware that we originally took out. This is the factory hardware. We can go around and secure that down. Now I recommend working from the middle outwards when you're, or when you're putting the splash shield back on. That's just gonna hold it in place a little bit better. And I'm just gonna take that 10 millimeter socket that we used before and just tighten those up. And that should hold the splash shield in place so we can align all the other bolts. So once we have the middle one secure, it's gonna be easy to reinstall the other bolts. And just keep tightening, it, tightening them up with the 10 millimeter socket. And then we can kind of repeat that for all of the remaining bolts. So that's gonna wrap it up for my review and install. Make sure you like and subscribe for more videos and products just like this. And always keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.